In this tutorial, I'll walk you through every step I use to create this shield and sword. Let's go. Press Shift A, go to Mesh and add a cube. Press Tab to go into edit mode, S and scale it down. And then we'll press S and X and we'll scale it up in the X axis. Go into face select by pressing three on your key numboard keyboard. Press Shift A and add a cube. Press Tab to go into edit mode and then S to scale it down. And then S and X to scale it up in the X axis. Go into face select by pressing three on your keyboard or clicking the icon here. Then select the top face, press G and Z, and we'll move it up. And then S and X, and we'll scale it up there. And then press E to extrude it up. And then S and X, and we'll scale it down. Go into vert select by clicking the icon here or pressing one on your keyboard. Select these two verts and press M and merge at center. And same for these. There we go. Press Ctrl R and add a loop cut right there. Press S and X, and we'll scale that up. And then select the top third, and then we'll go into front view by pressing one in your numpad or pressing the tilde key. Go open your view menu and go to front, and then press G and Z, and we'll move this third up there. And then we have a nice sword shape. Then we'll go into face select, and we'll select the front faces here, and then press I to inset, and then E to extrude it in. There is our sword shape. Then we'll leave edit mode, press shift A and we'll add a plane. Tab to go into edit mode and then S to scale it down and then S and Y and we'll scale it down there. And then S and X there. And then press E and extrude it down. And then S and scale that down. And then press Ctrl R and add two loop cuts. Go into face select and then with shift select this loop of faces and then G and Z and we'll move those down a tiny bit just like that. And then we'll select the top faces by holding shift, press shift D, enter, and then P and separate by selection. Press tab to leave edit mode and then we'll select our new object. Press tab to go back into edit mode, A to select all, S and we'll scale it down a tiny bit. And then press E and we'll extrude it up. And then we'll select the middle face and we'll move that one up. And then now we can Leave edit mode and then G and Z and we'll move it down a bit and we'll scale it down a bit in the Y axis and we'll make it nice and fit. And then we'll move this one up a tiny bit, scale it. And then we'll select both and we'll move them down to something like this. Tab and we'll adjust the sizing just until we have something that we like. And there we go. I think I'm going to go here and then select these two verts and merge those. And I'm going to do the same for these two. Press M and merge them as well. There, that looks much cleaner. And I also think we're going to select the sword. And I'm going to make it a tiny bit longer. Yeah, so it looks a tiny bit better in scaling. And then make this a tiny bit wider. There, yeah, I love how the scaling of that works. Okay. Press Shift A and then we'll add a cylinder tab to go into edit mode and we'll scale that down and then G and Z and we'll move it down and then we'll make it fit for the handle there and then scale it up a bit in the Z axis and then from front view we can see and that looks perfect. Okay, press Shift A and we'll add a UV sphere. We'll move that down and then scale it down. Press Z and toggle your X-ray. And then select the top half and then press X and then V to delete all the vertices. Then we can press S and scale this piece down a tiny bit in the Z axis. And then go into Edge Select and with holding Shift, select the top loop, press F to fill, and then we'll press I and we'll inset it twice. We'll toggle X ray again. And then we can move this up. We can adjust the shapes a tiny bit and we'll scale it down. There, yeah, I like how that looks. And then we'll press Shift D and Z to duplicate it and move it down. Tab to go into edit mode and then we'll scale it down and scale it up a bit in the set axis and then we'll move it into the other object. There. Yeah, I like how that looks. Okay, so then we'll select this one, right click and shade smooth. 
and then we'll press Control 2 to add a subdivision modifier. We'll do the same here, press Control 2, and then right click Shade Smooth. And then here we can just shade it smooth and then go tab into edit mode. Go into front view, toggle your X ray, go into third select. And then we'll select these verts and we'll move them down a bit so they're just by the side where they don't show. And then press Ctrl R and scroll up once to add two loop cuts. Right click to confirm. Go into edge select again. Hold Shift and Alt and select these two loops. And press Ctrl B and we'll bevel them. And just a tiny bit. And then press Alt E and F. So we extrude faces along normals. And we'll extrude that in. Then we'll toggle X-ray again. And then while X edge select is still active, we'll select these four edges by holding Shift and Alt. And then with Control B and scrolling up, we'll add some nice bevels. Just nice and smooth, like that. And then right click Shade Smooth. And it looks like a perfect handle. Okay, for this piece, we'll add a bevel modifier. So we'll go to a modifiers tab, add modifier, and we'll add a bevel. We'll change the segments to 4 and then maybe the amount to 0.04. Right click Shade Smooth and then Control 2 to add a subdivision modifier so it's nice and smooth. Then select this object and then hold Shift and select the other object we just changed. And then press Control L and P to copy the modifiers. And then right click Shade Smooth. And then we'll add a bevel modifier to our sword as well. So we'll go to modifiers and then we'll add a bevel. We'll change the segments to four. And here I want a very small bevel, like 0.02. There, yeah, that looks great. And then right click shade auto smooth. Okay, now we'll go into front view. Press shift A, mesh, and add a circle. And then change the vertices to eight. Press R and X and 90 to rotate it. And then press tab to go into edit mode and S and scale it up. Now go into vert select and then press F to fill the object. And then we'll select these two verts and press J to join them. We'll select the middle two, J, and then we'll select these two. I press J to join them. Go into edge select, select the three edges we just made. And then we'll press Ctrl B and we'll add a very slight bevel. And then X and F and we'll delete those faces. Press go out of edit mode, press G and Y and move it back. Press tab to go into edit mode, A to select all, and then E and we'll extrude it out. There, that looks great. Then we'll add a bevel modifier to this one as well. We'll change the segments to 4 and we'll change the amount to 0.04. And then we can right click shade auto smooth and then press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision modifier. Now press Shift A, mesh, and add another circle. Here we'll change the vertices to 32. Then we'll press RX 90 again to rotate it. We'll go back into front view and then tap to go into edit mode and then we'll scale it up. And we'll scale it up so it just covers the wood we just made. Like that. Then we'll press F to fill. Leave edit mode and then press G and Y and move it back. And then from top view we can see we'll move it just behind the shield. And then in edit mode we can Extrude with E there, so it covers it. Then press I to inset, like that, and then E to extrude it in. There we go. And then now we can select our whole object with A, and then we'll press S, and then Shift Y, so we'll scale it down in the Z and the X axis, just so it nicely covers the inside. It doesn't matter if it sticks out on the outside. Just make sure it's nice on the inside. And then we'll go into face select and with hold on shift, we'll select the outer loop and then press S, shift Y. And we'll scale that up. So now it covers it. And then we kind of want the same modifiers as these handle pieces here. So select this piece and then shift click there, control L and P. And there we go. And then right click shade smooth. Now we'll go and do our camera setup. So we'll go into front view, press Shift A and add a camera. And then press G and Y and we'll move it back. And then press zero on your numpad or through your view uh, menu, go to view camera. And then press G and Z twice so we can move it for backwards and forwards. And then I think we'll 
of it there. Then we'll go to our output settings and we'll change the resolution to 1920 by 1920. There, that looks perfect. Now we can uh, adjust the scaling. The shield should maybe be a tiny bit bigger. So we'll select the shield, go into edit mode, and then we'll scale it up a tiny bit there. We'll select our sword pieces and then we'll move it down and then press R and Z and rotate it a tiny bit, maybe 25 degrees minus. And then we'll rotate it like that by just pressing R. And then I think I like something like that. And then with G, we can put it in position. There, that looks perfect. Okay, then we'll add a background. So press Shift A, Mesh, and add a plane. Press RX 90 to rotate it. And then we'll press G and Y and move it all the way back. Tap to go into edit mode and then scale it up. And then in your camera view, you just got to make sure that it covers your background of your camera view. Okay, now we'll uh, do the lighting. So go into your render settings, change the engine to cycles. We'll change the device to GPU compute. Viewport render samples, I'm changing it to 128 and my normal render samples to 512. Uh, scroll down some more in color management. You want to change look to medium high contrast. And then now we'll press set and we'll go into our rendered view. And then with shift A, light will add an area light. And then press period and change your pivot point to 3D cursor. Press G and Z and move that up. And then press RX 30 minus to rotate it. And then in our light settings, we'll change the shape to disk. We'll change the size to two. And now let's change the power to 100. I think we want to move it back a tiny bit. So press G and Z twice to move it back. And we'll change the size to four and the power to 500. Now let's have a look how that looks. I think we could even change it to 600. There we go. And then press Shift D, R, Z, and 120. And then now I want to rotate this one so it kind of aligns with the rotation of the sword. So press R and X twice. And I will aim it right there. And I press G and Z twice to move it a bit closer. And then we can decrease the power to maybe 450. Yeah, that's great. Then press Shift D, R, Z, 120 again. And then R, X, X again. And then this one will shine from the bottom. So we'll align it with the other lamp. And then this one power is going to be like 300. It doesn't have to be that strong. I like how that looks. Then we'll press period and we'll change our pivot point to median point. And then we'll point a light at this corner here so that when we make it metallic, it has this nice bright shining uh, light on it. So we'll press shift A light and add an area light. Press G and Z to move it up. And then we'll move it close to this point here. You can see we'll move it close there. And then maybe from top view, seven on your numpad or through your view menu, we can move it a tiny bit there. And then now when we look at it, there's a small trick. If we press shift T, we can change the direction with our mouse and then we can just point it right there. And then it's pointing at the point we want our light to be. And then we'll change the power to maybe something like 80, but this will be easier to change and see when we actually have the material on it. So we'll probably change this later. Now we'll add a light to our background to add a nice gradient. So light and add an area light, RX 90, and then G and Y and move it towards our background. We'll change the shape to disc, size can be five, and then the power maybe 800. We'll see how that looks. It can be a bit further away from the background and then maybe 1200 power, or let's make it 1500. There are a few camera. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And now it's time to add our materials. So if we move our mouse cursor to the left top here, you see it change into a small plus sign. And then if you drag it to the right, you'll add another screen. And then in that screen, we'll press set and we'll change it to rendered view. And then we'll zoom in a tiny bit, maybe make it a bit smaller, bigger. There, that's great. And then we'll go here to this icon here and we'll change this to our shader editor. And then we'll start with our background. So we'll select the background, click new, and then we'll start adding our colors. The color for the background is going to be C3B7E7. And then we'll select the blade and we'll add a new 
material we can call it blade if you want to name your materials here we'll add some nice nodes before we do that i want you to go into your edit menu go to preferences add-ons and then search for node wrangler and make sure that node wrangler is activated and then we'll press shift a search and we'll add a gradient texture and then with gradient texture selected press ctrl t to add a mapping and then the texture coordinate and this is what the node wrangler does and then we'll press shift a search and we'll add a color ramp and then we'll connect the gradient texture to the color ramp and the color ramp to the base color and then we'll go into our mapping and we'll change the y rotation to 90. Now we'll go and add some colors. So our first color is going to be here and it's going to be 6667D. And then our lighter color is going to be D9D9FF. Just like that. And I will change some nice settings here as well. I want to change the metallic all the way to 1. And our specular is going to be maybe like 0.9. There, yeah, I think that looks awesome. Okay, well, now we'll make our gold material, which will uh, add to a lot of uh, parts of this piece. So select uh, the handle here, and then we'll press new, you can name it gold, and then we'll go and add a gradient texture again. So press shift A, search, gradient texture, press control T, we'll change our rotation to 90, and then we'll add a color ramp, right there we'll connect the gradient texture and then we'll connect the color ramp and then right here we'll have the colors of a8 5f to 7 and the other color is going to be ffd 5a2 okay and then we'll go here and we'll change them metallic to one again and our specular 2.9 just like that now we'll select the other pieces that are going to be gold so that's this one hold shift and select all of these and then select your gold texture object lost and then press ctrl l and m to link materials there we go then we'll change the handle so select the handle create a new material call it handle and once again, we'll go and add a gradient texture. So press Shift A and add a gradient texture. Press Control T. We'll change the rotation to 90. And then we'll add another color ramp. And we'll connect them just like that. And then we'll go and add our colors for the handle. So that's going to be F4F2 d26 and then with a plus we can add another color and then the one on the right is going to be the same as the one on the left so it's f4 f2 d26 and then our color in the middle is going to be 844 c3 c and then i want to decrease our roughness a tiny bit if we go here to roughness and i'm going to change that to 0.35 going to see what happens if we change the roughness of these pieces as well i think it looks kind of nice if we decrease it um maybe to 0.35 on both the blade and the gold and now we'll do our wood texture so select the back the shield wood and then we'll call the material wood and then here we're going to add a musgrave texture. Press Ctrl T to add a mapping and texture coordinates. We'll add a noise texture. And then we'll add a color ramp as well. And then we'll move this to the side a tiny bit, make some space. And we'll connect our musgrave to our noise and we'll the noise to the color ramp and then the color ramp to the base color. And there you can see that we have a nice pattern. We just got to change the scaling and the mapping a tiny bit. So if we change the Y, we'll see what happens there. That looks nice if we scale that up. And we can even scale this up a tiny bit. I'm going to material preview so it's a bit easier to see. 
and I want to make this wider. Change this, and then you can just play around with this until you have something you like. There, I think that looks pretty sick. Okay, so for me, I ended up at 0.59 for X, 0.24 for Y, and 1.13 for Z. And my Musgrave texture, I could just scale it to 5, so it's easier for you guys to copy. But feel free to play around with these settings yourself. Now we'll change, add some colors to our color ramp. Our first color will be 4F2 D26. Our second color is going to be right there. We'll add a plus and we'll add a middle color and we'll change that to 844C3C. And then our last color is going to be 190804. Just like that. And then we'll change our roughness to 0.3. Okay. And then we can go back into rendered view to see how it looks. Yeah, that looks clean. Okay, and then now if we go to the corner here and wait till it changes to a plus, and then if we drag it over the right screen, it will take over. And there we go. Now we'll add a world color. So if we go to our world tab here, and we'll go to color, and we'll change the color to 8A5F96. There we go. Okay, so now while I'm looking at it, I think I want to change some of the lighting a tiny bit. Uh, I want to select the left light, G and Z twice, move it a tiny bit closer, maybe increase the power to like 600. And then I'm going to change the color to maybe a nice like red orangey color. Maybe a bit in the middle there. And then the bottom light, I want to also move a tiny bit closer and I'm change the color to a colder blue color. there and then this is also going to be a tiny bit closer g set set twice maybe change it to 120 so it really gives off like nice lighting there and i think that looks awesome thanks for joining me if you have any questions or requests drop them in the comments below and feel free to like and subscribe i'd love to see your results so tag me on instagram see you soon